The next few exam questions is basically testing your understanding of this diagram here, where at the top, at point number one, the roller coaster, almost roller coaster, the cars start high up with a lot of gravitational potential energy. It's about knowing what type of energy the roller coaster has at different parts of the track. So at this case, it will be a lot of gravitational potential energy. And at this point number two, as the cars drop, the gravitational potential energy is gradually transferred into kinetic energy. At a point three, this is where the maximum kinetic energy is. At the bottom of the slope, the car reaches the highest speed and therefore its maximum kinetic energy. And at point four, as the car climbs the slope on the other side, kinetic energy is converted back into gravitational potential energy. So it's basically understanding is one, two, three, four. It's not really memorizing, but it's the understanding that the higher up you are, more kinetic energy. At the point where they're traveling the fastest is where there's the most kinetic energy. So let's look at the first question where it reads, this question is about energy. So you're being asked to look at the diagrams, A, B, C, D, and E. So the question asks you, which one of these is gaining kinetic energy? So you're looking for the diagram which resembles this part the most where as the car drops the gravitational potential energy is gradually transferred into kinetic energy or in other words is gradually gaining kinetic energy so which one looks like they're gaining kinetic energy is the one that looks like it's going down a slope and of course it's this diagram here diagram E one of these transfers potential energy into kinetic energy which one so if we look at the wording it's that is gradually transferred into kinetic energy so basically the same diagram answers both questions where it's gaining energy and this gaining of kinetic energy is, is because there is a transfer of potential energy into kinetic energy. So for both answers, E. So this next question involves your understanding from this part of the revision guide where it's telling you that the weight equals mass times gravity. This is just all the examples of how to use the formula, but it's pretty simple with all formulas. You're given the numbers, you just plug it into the formula and then you get your answer. And depending on what you want from the formula, you either divide or time. So to get the weight, you do mass times gravity. To get the mass, you do weight divided by gravity. It's, it's pretty simple. For them to put it under a chin is a blessing. And this part here is just a revision of what we already understand about terminal speed, which is when an object falls at its terminal speed, the speed isn't changing, so the kinetic energy doesn't increase. The gravitational potential energy decreases as the object does work against friction. GP is transferred into heat and sound energy. This is a bit of a revision, and this all you need to know is that weight equals mass times gravity. So let's look at an exam question to see how you're going to be tested on this. This is for one mark. A lot of information given just for one mark. So this question is about gravitational potential energy. So look at the information in the table. So you're given the different planets and their associated gravitational field strength. So Oliver calculates that the gravitational potential energy for a 1 kg mass at a height of 2 meters above the surface of each planet. So where will the 1 kg mass have the greatest gravitational potential energy? Well, obviously, it's the one with the greatest amount of field strength. Because according to the formula here, where weight equals mass times gravity, it's basically, the mass doesn't change. It's the gravity that changes depending on what planet you're on. So it's the planet with the highest this will give you the highest this. So to answer the question, where will the 1 kg mass have the greatest gravitational potential energy? Of course, it's the one with the greatest field strength, which is Jupiter. So the answer is Jupiter for one mark. And the next question is the final question of the unit one module, and also the last question on the physics section. So look at the graph. It shows how the potential energy of a roller coaster car changes as it moves along the track. As the diagram shows, you got the potential energy on this axis and the position on the track on these axes. But what's more important to realize is that this diagram basically resembles the one shown in the revision guide here. So you know when seeing that diagram, they're going to ask you something to do with the kinetic energy or potential energy depending on what part of the track it is on. So to know these four points and where they are is very important. They're likely to ask it you again when you guys sit your exams. The car is pulled to the top of the roller coaster and starts with a speed of 0 meters per second at point A. Complete the table to show how the energy of the car changes as it moves along the track. So as can be seen, you're given the position on the track, either A to B, B to C, or C or D, and you got to fill in these three spaces to get the full two marks, right? So between A and B, the potential energy decreases, therefore the kinetic energy increases, because there has to be a balance, right? And we know this anyway because... It says it here, where as the car drops, the gravitational potential energy is gradually transferred into kinetic energy. So therefore, this will be increases, and between B and C, the potential energy increases and the kinetic energy decreases. And just to confirm this, it says it here, as the car climbs the slope on the other side, kinetic energy is converted back into gravitational potential energy. And that's it for the unit one.